Welcome to A Fistful of Might, the adversarial libertarian interview podcast, a sort of supplemental podcast to the Lulberts podcast, available at thelulberts.com. This podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Zero license, no rights reserved, but all mites reserved. Today we'll be sitting down with Frederick Voltaire Bastiat, a YouTube channel mostly featuring discussions and debates. He describes himself as both a Hoppian and a Jeffersonian. We'll cover topics such as immigration, multiculturalism, cringe porn, and religion. But I repeat myself. So, hey, Voltaire, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. Um, so why don't you briefly kind of describe yourself? I, I think the way I used to ask it is like, who are you and why should I care? <laughs> but I think I'm, I think we're going to get into the adversarial stuff later. I think I should be with the pleasantries first, right? I'm a, I'm a classical liberal libertarian and I really like, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Haven't you described yourself as a, a Hoppian? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you mean like small government or no government kind of guy? Yeah, it it usually depends what I'm arguing for. Like I can just switch back and forth. I don't really care if the government exists or not. Okay. Like. Okay, so you're YouTube. You got a YouTube channel, and you're very active on Twitter. I don't know about Facebook because I'm trying to get away from that as much as possible. Um, so what do you usually talk about on uh, YouTube? Um, YouTube, I try to get, I try to interview people and talk to certain people about on certain topics, usually political philosophy most of the time and libertarianism. Okay. Are you one of those like, oh, but it's logic, therefore it's, it's, it's empirical proof. <laughs> no, I know you're not. Um, but you've had some yeah. interesting debates with, uh, some, some fairly prominent people considering that you're. I think you got like what somewhere in the realm of like 300 subs, 200 subs. What is that? Uh, uh, it's getting close to 200. Okay. Um, uh, have you had, what is it? Um, uh, Michelle Caitlin, is that her name? I think that's her name. Yes. Um, a few other people that I've, that I've recognized here and there. Um, so like, what are some of the topics that you guys, that you've debated with so far? Well, at first I did Marxism, and I quickly regretted that. Then, oh, you just, were a I Marxist? Mean, no, I did oh, no, okay. like I, uh, I debated Marxist, but I, I regretted that quickly and been boy, been avoiding that. So I've just been keeping into more moderate circles. Okay, all right. So what do you? I don't know. <laughs> Expand on some 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 of the the things that you've talked about recently with people. I guess. Let's see. Uh, right now, uh, more recently, I've been talking about uh, the more so history of foreign policy and the mentality of Henry Kissinger and comparing it to um, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Just, um, and recently, I have like a recently I have like a big uh, so, uh, somewhat uh, somewhat uh, big time philosopher kind of called Dirk Kurt Doolittle. He was on my stream like last week or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think people should check him out. He's, his philosophy is called proprietarianism. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it because it's really complicated. Okay. So um, you've taken a pretty hard line about uh, immigration. And um, I was watching it uh, just before we, we started recording. And I was kind of kind of confused because you, you did say that you kind of jump between kind of like a minarchist and an anarchist kind of perspective on things. Are you talking about like immigration controls within the st- current statist paradigm or if like or like covenant communities or both? Both, usually. OK. Because um, 
Just, um, just given the, like, I believe as the government exists or any nation state, they should have borders to just keep, just for the people's interest most of the time. All right. You got to remember that we're we're talking to an audience that probably doesn't oh. understand your position, so you probably should expand a little bit more. <laughs> oh, like oh, right, um, like for on that. I, like, I know since, I understand it, but yeah. Well, since we live in a country, since we live in the world of nation states, um, borders borders should be a thing because people will always come from different. They always bring the worst aspects of their cultures, like um. Like in certain cases, I mean, I may be perfectly fine for immigration. Like, for example, with Argentina, they basically build their economy around Italian immigrants and Italian and German immigrants. And they are like the heart of their economy for a while. But, you know, till socialism ruined, ruined everything like it always does. Did you cry for him? Huh? Our, it was an Avina joke. Um, a really bad one. <laughs> so yeah, um, like I, I do take issue with uh, with your stance on immigration. Well, I do agree with like some of the kind of the more multicultural aspects of it. Like I'm not a mul- multiculturalist at all. I don't think that's really compatible. But at the same time, I'm looking around, and yeah, like you have Islam, which is very kind of socialist if if not communist I, I think that's a pretty apt kind of term probably it's not philosophically marxist or exactly like a lot of uh, different flavors of communism but it's pretty 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 close especially when you look at like islamic uh economics i think that's i think it's, that's an actual thing um but at the same time i'm looking around europe at this and there's 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 a long long history of of, of communism democratic socialism and all that stuff too so I'm wondering, is it always, is it, is it, I mean, are, are we being selective in, in looking at like what cultures bring over these kind of collectivist mindsets and also maybe uh, first generation immigrants as well? You're coming out pretty badly. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the TLDR. Um, so, uh, you know, socialism, yeah, it comes from, from a lot of these cultures as well. Um, but it also comes from Western civilization states as well. Mm. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're still coming out okay. on my end. We're going to have to move the server a little bit. So, um, let's, let's move it. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, you're you're in you're in North Carolina. So I'm I'm trying to maybe find like a middle point. Let me know if I'm cutting out at all. So we'll try this again, uh, and I'm gonna leave it in because I don't believe in editing stuff out. So the, the 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 kind of the the again the the brief point that I was bringing up is yeah we look at like a lot of these kind of states or these kind of cultures that bring a lot of collectivist kind of mentality over like the Middle East, uh, Mexico, uh, you know, S- South America, that sort of thing, but should we also not overlook the fact that a lot of even Western civilization states bring over a lot of socialist ideas and even mm-hmm. thing is like, um, like we should be worried of that, but that's ultimately up to the people. If they want to vote in uh, socialism, that's on them. Like just don't just spread it to other, to other sovereign countries. Just, um, um, I'm not like it. Really, it's not like for people who really like pro Im- immigration control. Like they're real. They're really is they they really like to take take on the voting voting pre- patterns of these people and just take try to take that into consideration. Mm-hmm. Like they could be like um like for me like ordinarily I I be like pro like pro immigration because I do think they do bring like the more productive. Like if they're productive and they're in in that society, I'd be like for it. But if they're gonna bring like the worst access in their culture, like no, like no, we should we should try the the, the nation states should try to, to control that to just pre- try to preserve what works what works for them essentially. Yeah, yeah. I don't still I don't know if I agree. <laughs> 
Um, so I mean, yeah, like, yeah, like, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm on board. I'm, I, I understand that like, there's the, you know, these, these kind of cultures do kind of bring over a lot of, you know, b- bad aspects over when they come over. Um, but then you also have like first generation immigrants, like people, people who come here, have children, and then those children's end up going to the, the public schools and getting assimilated very well. Most of the time, a lot of the ones that, that I knew, like I, I grew up in Southern California and there was a lot of like Mexican immigration to Southern California, as you can imagine. But I remember like all of my friends being very well integrated as well into the American culture. They enjoy American, um, uh, popular culture. They, you know, they, you know, they take a wide variety of stances on uncertain issues and stuff like that. Whereas, yeah, the, their parents, maybe not so much. They seem to bring a lot of the, the, the stuff that they came here with them. But a lot of the times the ones that were coming here, not all of them, um, but a lot of the ones that were coming here kind of saw America for like what it is and wanted that versus, Oh, I want to come here and exploit like certain aspects of the socialist culture and try to promote it more. I, I don't really see that being necessarily the case. I mean, sure, voting demographics speak a lot to that as well, but I, I think there's a little bit more to that than just kind of like the pure multiculturalism aspect of it as well. Like with that, I have no problem with that if they assimilate them. Like by assimilation is ultimately a good thing. Like for with with America it's a different case since there since um um, since a lot of people from di- all around the world come f- come from the place come from different places, and they just assimilate, just accept the American culture. You know? mm-hmm. I, America is truly a special case because it, it's it's essentially a melting pot. It's always been a melting pot. Yeah. Hmm. I think. Um... Yeah, I mean, it, it is a melting pot to an extent, and um, I mean, a, like American culture does have like a lot of very foreign aspects of it as well, um, sp- especially in like places like New York, where it's where it's insane the amount of diversity that they have in that area. Sure, it's very left, <laughs> very very left, but at the same time, I don't know, like, because okay, so um, where do you where do you see kind of like. Uh, American blacks on that on that spectrum as well. Do you kind of mm-hmm. see them in a similar fashion? I mean, you're you're African American yourself, right? Yes. So, I mean, I know this, but listeners may not see you. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> so, where do you kind of see this whole kind of aspect as well? Because I, I know there's a lot of talk within, maybe not you, but like in the Hoppian kind of people as well. They they're really kind of like, well, blacks just are going to vote for Democrats. With blacks, um, <laughs> never, um, never blacks. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, the, the thing with blacks is like they're like they've been part like they're they're ultimately part of the American DNA. If like for the more extreme Hoppians, um, the like they kind of have to deny that for blacks, they're just um, they're just part of the um, American culture. And if they vote Democrats, um, then so be it. Like, uh, um, since since um, since they're kind of taught that the Democrats kind of been like, kind of been like their friend, like their um, ally of sorts. Mm-hmm. Just um, it's they like there's like there's always gonna be like collectivist black people in in our commu- in our communities. Just um, just more the individualists like such as myself here, like just. Realize that these people, the Democrats and Republicans, are ultimately incompetent. Like, there's not always going to be like a uh, Larry Elder or a Thomas Sowell, but um, just um, just just give them time. They they will eventually like they they voted like black communities has voted right before they're gonna vote right again eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but I've, I've noticed that like a lot of them really do kind of have a lot of at least socially conservative views, maybe not economically, but a yeah, lot that's of them... just the, uh, Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like black, black people really, really don't like, like, uh, really don't like um, a lot of, a lot of the stuff and other things. Like they're pretty, 
they, they take they just take a hard stance on that yeah like gay marriage they're very much against just homosexuality in general i've, I've talked to a lot of i work with a lot of with, with a lot of black people and, and some of the things that i hear them say about gay people is just like wow I wouldn't even I wouldn't even hear that from <laughs> like an extreme like conservative uh, these days anymore. Just uh, with that, like it's just it's just the Christian it's just the Christian yeah just the more Christian aspect of that. Just even my mom don't like uh, gay people that much or not comfortable around them. Yeah. Just. Um, and it's not yes, really no. aspects that you would associate with like the Democratic Party, but it, they still try to reach out to this kind of intersectional kind of politics where they're trying to reach as many kind of people as possible. And it seems to be kind of conflicting. And I'm wondering like when 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 the, the dam is going to break on this, either are, is the African-American community going to end up like embracing more kind of socially liberal policies or are they going to start rejecting a lot of the, the democratic stance and try to maybe move a little bit more conservative? I'm wondering which way this is going to go. Uh, since, uh, since uh, they're probably going to lean right on social conservative views, because it's just that for many African American communities, like specifically like black people are really like deeply religious. Like they, they're most likely gonna have like more socially conservative views due to that aspect. Just um, mm. um, maybe maybe the next generation may have like more socially liberal views, but not the older generations. Yeah, I mean a lot of the one, a lot of the pe people I see that are really into politics, they're either I'm I'm noticing kind of like two kind of flavors with it, but then again like this is on YouTube and the left is starting to really kind of lose a lot of ground on, on YouTube. Um, YouTube's trying to fight back. Like the, the entity YouTube itself is trying to fight back against this a little bit, but it seems as though conservatives are kind of starting to dominate a lot more on YouTube. But um, it seems as though uh, either some of them are really kind of taking this extreme kind of SJW stance or they're kind of being more like the, the Dave Rubens, like some black guy and, 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 and the likes, you know, I, yeah, that, sure. that guy TC and you seem to be kind of the exception to the rule. Just, um, uh, just, uh, they, they, they doesn't like being with internet politics. It doesn't really describe the reality right. of the world. Like, um, like otherwise Ron Paul of... would have been on his third term. <laughs> <laughs> just, just uh, just like for just like for black for black communities, there's just like there's always gonna be like a they're always gonna take like a borderline homophobic stance or more socially conservative stance than most average people. Mm -hmm. That's just how they were taught. Just um, I don't mm -hmm. know what um, some black guy. Or that guy see background on it, but just for my, for my authorization being part of this group for all my life, just um, it, it's it's a bit complicated. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, going back to immigration a little bit, um, like I I hear I hear and I've heard it from you too. Um, the the kind of perspective that these immigrants will come here, they'll end up voting for candidates. Assume I'm assuming that you're talking about like Democrats, correct? Right. That that, that they're going to vote for Democrats, wh which they're going to enact like big government policies. And then I'm looking at like, I mean, just the I mean, just the recent, probably maybe not so much so the case with Bush or uh, Bush Senior or uh, Reagan, but to an extent them too. But when I'm seeing like like the kind of rise of the populist kind of view as well, I'm seeing a lot of like white people and uh you know not immigrants or first generation or whatever uh, you know full-blooded americans i guess vo uh, kind of taking a lot of kind of bernie sanders kind of positions on things like trade uh maybe not you know welfare and stuff like that but definitely along the lines of like trade and uh, uh and that sort of thing protectionism um where do you see that as in that in that kind of viewpoint uh, just, um, uh, it's honestly it's just sort of, America is sort of slowly becoming more like Europe, like 
where Europe is sort of like notoriously left left wing. Mm-hmm. Just um, with that, it's it just like it's ever since Obama been elected, like Amer- like uh, the American people have been just slowly drifting more to left to more left wing, more moderate left wing politics. Just um, do you think that's because of Obama or? Like it's probably been building. It's probably been building up since like okay. the nineteen sixties. Like, um, it's not like Obama was just a catalyst, but it was just like it's just been building up. Like it's just been it's just been like a it's just been slowly drifting on the left to the six since the nineteen sixties. Yeah. With the neoconservative Trotskyites kind of moving over to the conservative. Yeah. Also, uh, there's a really great book that sort of explains like doesn't really explain why. Um, why these people are starting to vote more left, but it, but it's a story explaining the more like more great divisions in in white communities called uh, "Coming Apart" by Charles Murray. Okay, um, I know who Charles Mar- Murray is. Yeah, this is a really it's a really good book. Like, it's a really good book. I recommend everyone anyone to read that. Yeah. It's, it's it's kind of interesting. I, I I that's why I'm really kind of like hesitant to to buy into the whole like sure like multiculturalism, the promotion of multiculturalism. I would agree. Like yeah, that kind of promotes really kind of dangerous stuff. Well, at the same time, I'm I'm looking around at my people. I guess whatever. Not not my people. I don't own them. Uh, but like I'm looking around and I'm like, this is you know academia, very white male. On top of that, very white. Um, and they're very socialist, communist. A lot of the communists I see on YouTube, a bunch of white dudes for the most part. Um, I, I could not turn off that that notification for <laughs> me. I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, and I'm, I'm looking around and, I, and, I'm, and even, even on the right, I'm starting to see a lot of people starting to go into like right wing flavors of socialism, you know, be it not, maybe not Nat Sock so much, but more like populist kind of aspects you know what would you expect from like the you know the the front national or bmp uh in uh, in in england and those kind of economic policies where it's yeah it's socialism but it's it's a different kind of flavor of them there's there's still like it's yeah, you know you understand what i mean right yeah it's just, it's just um yeah it's just been a, it's just been a great shift um um but around the world um People are slowly drifting more to the right brain in and different places, or? and cult, cult, economics and culturally speaking. Okay, just um, like it, it, like for America, it may be trending towards to more left wing poli- more left wing policies and economic nationalism. But I think that's just going to be like a short trend. Yeah, um, they usually don't last that long. <laughs> Like kind of, yeah. yeah, economic nationalism, uh, it's bad, bad. And when I see like people like, you know, Cantwell complaining that like, oh, the, the you know, the leftists are taking over the right wing movements. You know, they did it with the libertarians. And now they're doing it with the with the all right. I'm like, dude, but you were speaking at God. What was it? The workers part of the white workers party or whatever it was called. They even had like the socialist kind of symbol. And he was I was like, dude, you were there speaking in front of a, like a explicitly like socialist symbol. <laughs> I don't know why you're surprised now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe can't. Maybe can't. Well, just realize that maybe, maybe not. Maybe just not being. Maybe just being white is not enough anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's never been the case. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you if you look at like a lot of the, I think probably the the vast majority of of economic views or political views. A lot of them kind of started out with Jews, for better or for worse. You know, Marxism all the way down to like libertarianism. A lot of the kind of influential people that contributed the most have ended up being Jewish. So I don't know if it's a big Jewish conspiracy. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the big Jewish conspiracy is also helping. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Like, rock. Rothbard was a Jew. Karl Marx was a Jew. Rand was a Jew. Yeah, there's a maybe, lot of like, conservative they, thinkers as well that are Jewish as well. So, I don't know. Just like I still like Rothbard. Like I'm not anti-Semite. Just like, but I'm really saying <laughs> that I'm not. I'm not implying you were. <laughs> but I'm really saying like someone like Irving Crystal was a mistake, though. 
Yeah. Uh, like, Marx was a just, mistake. Yeah, like, um, well, with Irving Crystal, he's just sort of brought the more Trotskyist elements into the neoconservative movement. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I guess uh, y- you ended up having a fight with uh, with a YouTuber called Nightmare Fuel. We should probably talk about a little bit about like atheism yeah. and religion and stuff. Um, he accused me of strawmanning him or strawmanning antitheism, which was funny because a couple of other people tried to make that claim as well. And I was like, well, so you don't hold these positions? And they're like, well, what's wrong with them? <laughs> so, so how am I, I strawmanning know. you? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, so it's like with anti with anti-theism, it's um right. it's for anti theists individually, some can be reasonable, borderline moderate, and just like just um like for the more more uh what's the good word for it? Um for the more utopian the more constrained vision as Thomas Soul will state, like they're they're just absurd sometimes. Yeah. But but you yourself you're you you identify as a Christian, yeah. Right. But I but I don't like Christian apologetics that much. Okay, yeah. I've been kind of, like, I've been kind of getting into Satanism, um, not devil worshiping, but basically it's just a, it's just a strand of atheism um, that has fun, I guess. Yeah, just um, <laughs> just um, <laughs> just um. I don't know, like, uh, like there's men like they seem like they're more willing to blame religion on every problem in the single world. But hey, like, you may be right in some of these analysis, but I think you're, I think yeah, you know, I think you're started from a false starting point. Yeah, and I was when I was making that video, I was, and the video was basically like, let me let me take a hard stance against anti theism. I am an atheist. But I, I, a lot of the kind of anti-theists that I run into, which I was a part of for a long time, and I did believe a lot of these things, and I was just basically making the case that just getting rid of religion isn't going to solve anything. There's, there's got to be some kind of framework that kind of replaces it as well. Uh, if you're going to do that, but at the, at the at the same time, just getting rid of religion, you know, religion is itself is not the problem. Or theism, rather, is not the problem. And I was kind of going over some of the things that a lot of anti-theism brings to the table, which is that, you know, if we get rid of religion or we get rid of theism, then we get rid of like war, a lot of the wars, uh, you get rid of a lot of the terrorist attacks and stuff like that. And you were talking about some of this stuff as well. Uh, and that didn't fly over too well with a lot of anti-theists. I... Like most, like most of these, um, like most of these problem, these problems in the world are not going to be solved by just getting rid of, like relig- religions like Islam and Christianity. You just need to, like, um, it's just like it's honestly more like a clash of civilizations. That sort mm-hmm. of thing. That's the that's the bigger conflict here. Now it's not it's not just a conflict of religions, but more so. Re- Civilization, such as the West versus Islam, I think that's a more accurate way of viewing things. Yeah. Um, on Nightmare Fuel, the '90s Democrats. Eh, I don't know what that guy's problem. I really don't know like what that guy's problem is. Like he's not willing to debate the smaller people that will willing to challenge him on Twitter. Just, um, but it'll throw you in a video. Like, yeah, that's the sort of thing. Like, hey, like, like you'll throw you'll throw someone like me into a video and just like just just basically you basically to- telling me this is a stupid person that I a stupid person who disagrees with me and I can explain my viewpoint while making fun of this guy. Just um, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so, you, but I guess his contention was that at, at least in your in his video was that that you you were making the claim that anti-theism could lead to bigotry. Do you want to expound on that? What what why you would think that? Oh, it could lead Which to. I, I, oh. By the way, I do agree. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, like oh, like any like um 
Antitheists can be pretty much pious as religious people, so I don't really, so I don't really don't try to draw that distinction because, um, hey, uh, you both have ideological worldviews, and you can just like pretty much be an asshole about it to like any religious person. Yep. Just um, and that that will get the yeah that gets them mad the most is you, <laughs> when you when you call them religious or pious. Ooh, the, wait, wait, the anti-theists. What may call them? About that. I don't know if you were quoting someone, but... I'll... Oh, I was low, right. Uh, oh, man, like, uh, someone told me I was quoting Goebbels. Like, he said something about the Jew, like, uh, the Jew may... The Jew is immunized against all dangers. One may call him a scoundrel, a cheat, all roll off like a rain... All roll off water like a raincoat, but call him... But call him a oh man. But call him a bank. I'm just gonna say a banker, and these, and you'd be surprised how shock and recoil shock how injury is. So you and, you basically modified a curveless quote. <laughs> yeah. Because it was it was I was like oh, it's, it's almost sounds like someone is like writing something down <laughs> that he's quoting someone, but that's kind of funny that you turned around. I'm I'm a big fan of parody. Uh, yeah. Even if, even if like the, the origins were, there was this book that, um, called the occult technology of power, which is a fascinating read, but it is a parody of, uh, the protocols of the elders of Zion. <laughs> so I'm a big, I'm a, I, so I guess that's funny. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I get that. Like I used to be very pious as well. Um, I really did genuinely believe that if, that if the world just got rid of theism or this, this belief in this 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 uh this 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 divine creature in the sky that controls everything that once we get rid of that then everything will be great but then when you start looking at a lot of the kind of conflicts that religion has had like the crusades and all that stuff you quickly find out that a lot of that stuff was just being used as kind of propaganda to get people to help fight in this war and it usually has its origins more in the in the realm of you know, resource conflicts like people wanted land or they wanted certain, you know, resources that a, that a certain area had. And they use that as a kind of a reason. It's the same thing with, I think, that a lot of the war on terror. Sure, there's a lot of stuff in Islam that's it's very dangerous and, and, and promotes that kind of stuff. But a lot of these kind of things are, are just being used to, you know, uh, have conflicts with is, Israel you know, there's, and it's mostly just a way to get the get their land back. Apparently, yeah, just yeah, that's sort of like a thing. Like, um, since ever since like nine eleven, like there's been like a rather moderate surge of militarism in the American population. Yeah, just um, it's sort of like a thing. Like people will be more really identify, be more really identify with their nation state if they feel like they're threat. If they feel like they're threatened from an external force, just um, yeah, it's is like you say, it's it's pretty much like a propaganda tool. Like if people like really gonna be really dis dead that dead honest about themselves and realize, hey, this is it, and I support this. Like that's um that's more so like the political realists. I think mm-hmm. they take that position. Yeah. So I mean. I- and, and kind of my, my view on kind of my religion as well is just more like it's anti evangelical. Like I, I'm not really interested in spreading my ideas because I know that most people aren't going to aren't going to be receptive to it, which is kind of the point of with a lot of the things, <laughs> symbols and, and, and rights and stuff is explicitly meant to kind of drive a lot of people away. Um, you know, what good is a left hand path if everybody's taking it right? Um, <laughs> so, um yeah, so I, I kind of get that, but at the same time, I'm, I'm really like, yeah, like there's there's a lot of problems with theism, which which we will probably disagree with, but at the same time, it I really, really as long as it doesn't from you know from Jefferson, I guess you're a fan of Jefferson, uh, if, as long as it doesn't pick my pocket, pick my pocket or break my leg, have at it. You know, you want to start taking my porn, them's fighting words. <laughs> yeah, I. I, I uh... Honestly, I don't. Honestly, I don't try to let my religious beliefs affect my views on politics. Yeah. Honestly, because otherwise you'd be a communist, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, 
or I'd be part of a cult. Or I'd be part of a cult. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. It drives me nuts when people refer to all religions as cults. <laughs> that's 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 the one way you can trigger me. If you're looking to trigger me, just come up and tell me that like my religion or ever ever people's religions are a cult. You them's fighting words right there. <laughs> Honestly, you could say the military is a cult. Yes, I would say that. Well, they employ, well, yeah. Uh, they also employ a lot of kind of cult brainwashing techniques. Um, and that's kind of like the origin of a lot of where cults kind of get their their kind of uh, methods in, in, in doing things. And it's kind of necessary to have that in a military service, even if it's not status as well. Because you need to strip people of individual individualism and because if you have a bunch of people who are thinking independently and rationally about things, um, they're not going to duck when someone tells them to duck. They're going to say, why? And then they're dead. So uh, <laughs> you kind of need to, to strip away that kind of that 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 thing. So when people were kind of uh, when when Dr. Lifton wrote the book, which is kind of like one of the seminal works and kind of the anti cult kind of therapist community. Um, thought reform in the in the totality or in, in the uh, geez, I can't remember the title. I have the book. I've read it. I don't know how many times. Um, thought reform and whatever in totalism. Um, he, he was he was uh, not talking about cults. He was talking about the brainwashing techniques of of China and was even like kind of going like. The United States kind of military does this as well, <laughs> but uh, it's it's more extreme in in China. And it wasn't until people in cults going like, "That's exactly what happened to me when I was in the Moonies." And it turns out the reason why the Moonies were doing it was because Moon was <laughs> was being brainwashed by the Chinese uh, during the during the war, one of the wars. So it's kind yeah. of an interesting thing. But to say that like the, what happens in the military or what happens in the Moonies is the same thing that happens in like just some regular harmless uh, Baptist church. I think that's, that's really stretching it and saying that all of them are the same. That's even, that's really stretching it too. Yeah. Also uh, more into the anti-theist and the, uh, theist debates. Like they always at some point bring up communism mm -hmm. and it's like, Hey, these guys were atheists, and they spread communism in China. So therefore, we're gonna put this on the atheist death list. Wait, no, no, no. Uh, Christianity, Christianity has propagated communism as well. So therefore, Christians are communists too. And I was like, no, both both of you are stupid for bringing up something that is totally irrelevant to your discourse. Yeah. I know that Jesus was talking about when he talks like a communist, what he's not saying is there should be a state that, uh, that does these kinds of things. What he's actually saying is you should do these things and help out your fellow man. That's a very different kind of prescriptive claim. Just, um, my, I was speaking to a big, um, atheist, um, uh, YouTuber called godless cranium. Like, um, uh, and he was interacting with the other guy called Ghost of Buckley. Um, he was like, uh, he was just sort of like accusing of Godless Crane, just um, that atheism is historically been on the left, the left, and have communistic roots. That Karl Marx was an atheist and all that nonsense. And at some point, he also made a video about it, uh, about explaining his stance on communism. He basically said he trashed it, and he also pointed out that Christianity hasn't really done anything to stop the spread of communism. Yep. Um, and I just thought to myself, that's uh, that's that's sort of that's a bit iffy, and I think like I, I think it's just I think it's coming from a false starting point. For me, what ended up leading me out of of uh, of leftism was atheists, was like the kind of skeptic, the original skeptic community where they used to talk about skepticism and not just, you know, how much they hate SJWs. Um, it was that kind of community. It was it was actually Penn and Teller um, who kind of got me out of that with with bullshit. So it's not necessarily the case that it's true. But yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I think most of the atheists 
that I've run into are not Marxist. Sure, maybe uh, they're, they're leaning left, but definitely not Marxist. Yeah. yeah. Just, um, just like, if you like, if you have to talk to like actual, like, well, actual tra tra traditionalists or people who are really into their Catholic faith, um, they like to bring up the French Revolution. They say that that sort of have atheistic tones. Just um, perhaps. Like um, I remember I watched a video called a guy called Fritz Imperial saying like he was critiquing uh, Thomas Paine, the Age of Reason. Um, um, just um, what was the video? He was he was he was basically explaining a historical context, and he was basically saying that these revolutionaries were slaughtering Catholics. This is why Catholics are not particularly fond of of the. They're not particularly fond of uh, republicanism due to the uh, um, historic disrespect for the church and and Catholics um, um, not really fond of communism due to the fact of the um, Spanish Revolution, the, Sp the, the Spanish Civil War, where they massacre, where they really heavily persecute Catholic people. Just. Um, Let's just say that the Catholic Church and communism don't really have a good history. No. No, it doesn't. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because probably I think about the 70s, late 70s or so, most people didn't really identify themselves as Christian. Like they would say, like, I'm a Baptist or I'm a Catholic or I'm a Protestant or I'm a Mormon. But it really, was, it really wasn't until like – um. It really wasn't until like about the late 60s or so that they started going like, oh, well, we need to kind of group together and, and kind of be our own, you know, just stop fighting with each other. Because, I mean, like people didn't want Kennedy uh, elected because he was a Catholic and we can't have a Catholic president. Now we don't even care. Like Mormon, whatever, as long as he's a Christian. <laughs> but before then, like people were like a lot of these kind of groups were fighting and now they seem to be a little bit more unified. And... Will atheism be in that mix later on? Who knows? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Because they're just um, because Mormons just, weren't even included in that bunch. Like they were, they would exclude Mormons. But now, apparently, with Mitt Romney, yeah. Now, now they're in the bunch. Now they call themselves Christians. Wait, yeah. Mormon? Like Mitt Romney is a Mormon? Yeah, yeah. You didn't know that? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't pay attention to that guy. He, no. he even wears the more magic Mormon underwear. <laughs> oh wow. Actually, I know. Actually, I I know a Mormon ANCAP. Actually, he's a cool guy. Yeah. He even once said that Mormonism is really libertarian. I don't know if that's true. I don't know anything about their faith, but hey, I'm just gonna take his word for it. It's, it's, <sighs> they have a lot of really kind of stringent, <laughs> stringent, uh, prescriptive views on their on their on their social conservatism for sure. Uh, Salt Lake City is a good example. You know, they're really kind of anti drink. They got a lot of crazy blue laws over there, so I don't know about all that. But um, uh, Utah, I want to visit. Is, it, is Utah nice? I heard it's quite the. Um, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. A lot of areas. Zion, the 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 parks, Colop Canyon. A lot of that stuff is really <laughs> Colop Canyon. It always makes me laugh because <laughs> Colop is the planet that God lives on. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, Kolob Canyon. A lot of that stuff is really beautiful. That a lot of their national parks are really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But just um, yeah, Mormonism probably like one of the most weirdest yet distinctly American religion. Honestly. Yeah. It is. It is the most American religion <laughs> by far. It is. It is the. It is as American as American gets. It's. It's apple pie. But Jesus, I mean, Jesus came to America, according to them. <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like many, like many people, want to go back to the 1950s. Like the more conservative, the more conservative Republicans may look at the Mormon family unit. Yeah. Say, hey, this is like a this is like a good family unit. Two, um, two, uh, two, a two parent household, about seven kids. And living on a big farm somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. 
yeah, this is a good lifestyle. Well, originally the Mormons were polygamist and it wasn't like, it's, it's not even like the kind of what we would consider like the, the degenerate stuff. It's more like arranged marriages, pedophilia. Oh, I'm getting movement on your mic. Uh, Sorry. You know, yeah. Arranged marriages, pedophilia, incest. Um, that's not good. <laughs> and I, I'm really kind of like, I don't care if, if like a few people want to get married, that doesn't bother me. But as like an, it, like to, to create it as like an institution, like that's the way we need to do it really leads you down some really dangerous routes, really, really dangerous. Uh, especially because you have an, an excess of male children. Uh, and when there's an excess of unmarriable unmar- male children, they just usually send them off to war. And that's, that's an ugly world. Um, because of the incestual nature of, of institutionalized polygamy, which is necessary because, you know, you start running out of women real quick is, you know, you end up, uh, wanting like a social, like a, a socialist state because you need to have some sort of like funding in order to fund like all these, for lack of a better term, retarded kids that these, you know, that they, that they pump out. And it's, it's really ugly. A lot of these kind of fundamentalist Mormon kind of cults and stuff. It gets really ugly really quick. Oh man, just I remember see I remembering seeing the news about this uh, uh about this lady escaping the more like her father's cult and just um uh, it's her story story her story is kind of amazing and also sad like giving like um her father her father sexually abused her from my uh, from my as uh, from my recollection of seeing that news channel, mm-hmm. um, it's like it sort of like it sort of messed up how these cults are are really just abuse abuse people, and, and these kids are sort of just taught that this is like a natural thing to do. Yeah. Just I uh, I don't think most I don't think most average people can cannot truly understand that if they actually experience firsthand. Yeah. You know? And again, that's why it drives me up the wall when people say like, oh, when someone goes to a Catholic mass and, you know, takes, you know, and and puts a piece of bread in their mouth. And because they believe that it's Jesus, that's the same thing as like going up and joining the the Scientology Sea Org and going out to Gold Base and being forced to work all, all day with barbed wired fences that are aimed in to keep people in, not to keep people out, to keep people in and people have to escape you know, and almost risk death. Like I really recommend, like I, I'm really not a fan of the way he writes, but it's a really interesting story. So it's really easy to ignore his, his prose. Um, but a, there's a book called blown for good by Mark Headley. And I used, I used to hang out with his dad <laughs> when I used to go protest Scientology. Um, but you know, oh. he, he's got a really kind of, it's, it's insane. The story that he, that, that his escape story from gold base, it's insane. Yeah. Oh, Scientology? I thought that yeah. was just a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> no, it, it's nasty. There's a straight up, there is a straight up slave labor camp in Hemet, California, right outside of Hemet, California. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, was, I, I just always have that assumption that Scientology was just a Ponzi scheme, a really big Ponzi scheme. Yeah, it is. It is for public. Um Public Scientologists are people who just go and pay money and do the courses, and, you know, to get to OT, you know, OT8, where they can have mind powers. Um, that is pretty much just a financial cult. But if you don't, if you can't afford Scientology courses, then they try to get you to, to be, to work for them. And that's where it gets ugly. Join the Sea Org. And that's where it gets really ugly. You're basically a slave. Yeah. So, um, is the state police going to do anything about that? No, or? they're well connected with the city of Riverside. Really well connected, you know. And the uh, IRS, IRS don't want even want to bother fighting them anymore. <laughs> yeah, they just, oh, that's oh they, man, they that's a up. yeah. Oh man, that's a failure of government. Yeah. Huh. So, hmm. and that's man, that's really messed up. Yep. Hmm. So, is there anything else you want to fight on? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, yeah. we could bash someone. Um, let's talk about esoteric entity. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it was going to come up. Go ahead. Oh, man. Okay. What's your What's your main 
Actually, how do you even discover uh, esoteric entity? On oh history? boy, uh, that's a good question. I'm not even sure if I remember. I f think because I I I. <laughs> I, I, I like to have cringe. I, I like, I love my cringe porn, right? I guess there's a little bit of shoe on head in me a little bit. Um, so like I enjoy cringe and then I ended up coming across, um, because I follow anarchy ball. I was like watching the, the video versions of it back when he was still involved with anarchy ball. And some of that stuff was super cringy. And I was like, Oh, this is great. And for some reason, I think he ended up, mirroring one of esoteric vi into these videos. I think that's how I found out about them. And I was like, ooh, more cringe porn. And I just didn't realize how cringe the, <laughs> the <laughs> how cringe and caps could be. I mean, I knew it was can, can be cringy, but that was just a whole different level. And it used to just drive me up the wall that he would that he would he would say things like, um, Anarcho-capitalism can be proved empirically. And then when people go like, okay, how can it be uh, proved empirically if there hasn't been like a real test case? I mean, there's been glimmers, but not a real test case. And he goes like, well, it's, and then he'll show like an image of like how logic works. And I'm like, that's by definition wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an empirical oh. case. That's, that's a, you know, that's a logical case. Maybe. You know, that's a rational case for it, but that's not like an empirical case for it. It's very different. By de and it's one of his fans even have asked me, like, you, you say that, you know, like you just brush it off as <laughs> as like, but you'd never explain like why. I was like, I don't have to. Right. Oh, so, um, I, I remember you like being real active in the comments when you make any videos about uh, the Nazi economy, like. Um, when he was respond or responded to Democratic Socialist yeah. Zero One, um, and he was like wiping out comments. Yeah, I was, uh, man, good times. Actually, <laughs> I was more actually. I was more. I was more on the academic agents. I was more for. I was more falling on the academics agents. Side. By the way, he blocked me on Twitter, and I have no reason why. I've never followed him. I never liked any of his tweets. I've never tweeted at him. I th and I think Wait. it was because someone like was tweeting at him in a thread that I was on, like I was linked to. I think you, yeah, I think it was because you tweeted something out to to all of us, to a bunch of b different people, and then like there was an exchange between two other people, or him and some other person, and because I was in the conversation, even though I didn't respond to it, I ended up getting blocked by him. And I was, I saw yeah. the, him fighting with someone, and then all of a sudden it was all gone, and I was like, what the hell? And it turned out I was blocked. They the, ac the academic do? agent blacked you? Yeah, F for yeah, man. for no valid reason, <laughs> for, for no you know for no good reason. Let's see, he's probably let's see. Uh, I don't even know who he really is. I think I've seen him. I think I've seen him on your channel once or twice, but I'm not sure if I ended up watching any of the ones that he was in. So oh oh, uh, British libertarian YouTuber. Okay. I don't know why he would block uh, me. I... Uh, he made some videos about the Nazi economy. Well, he sort of made the case that fascism is the other form of socialism through the horse truth theory. And basically, basically. And basically, I, he it drives used... me up the wall. What, what, what does like when someone wants to say like it's a flavor of socialism? Like, okay, yeah, but when people try to say that that Nazism is left wing, I'm like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. that's what, that's when I'm, that's when I'm, that's when I, when I'm, that's why I ended up having a fight with esoteric initially. I was like, it's not left wing. It's socialism, but socialism isn't necessarily left wing. So, um, yeah, he made, uh, yeah, the academic made that case and just, um, he also used that same miss, miss this article by Lou Rockwell about the Nazi economy. Just um, and many like many of the tankies just sort of started accusing him of, of like being an ANCAP, and he's really not. Although he likes Rothbard and David Friedman, but just like I, I, I kind of feel bad for the Mystics Institute because it's sort like they, they, they're just, they're just such a meme in other communities. <laughs> yeah. 
And they get and, a lot of undue shit, like a lot of undue shit. Like there's there's some stuff to be said, but the, a lot of undue stuff too. It's like, come on, it makes my criticism of some of the things they do. Like now I'm associated with people who think that they're dog whistling. It's like no, and I got co-hosts who fucking make podcasts saying like they're dog whistling. I'm like, shut up, <laughs> just shut up. Just. The Nazi economy, just um, oh, there's a good book about uh, the Nazi economy called uh, The Wages of Destruction by Adam Tools. I recommend to get that at some point, yeah. But I think, I think when I was fighting with Esoteric and he was deleting comments, I was making the case that because I don't think Eastern Marxists ended up leaving YouTube, um, but what, what he was saying was, yes, there is, um you know, people who, who transcend, you know, classes, right? There's poor people who end up becoming rich and rich people are becoming poor. He's like, but it's pretty much like significantly insignificant. It does happen, but it's rare. And I disagree with that. And I was trying to make the case that an esoteric was trying to say that it, that he was saying that it never happens. And he was trying to show like, look, it, there's, there's evidence to show that it does happen. And I'm like, okay, yes, I agree with you that it does happen. I disagree with him that it's that it's rare, but you can't say that he's saying that it never happens because he's saying that it does happen. It's just very rare. And he was deleting comments and then responding to me saying, you're insane. There is there is income mobility. And I'm like, I know that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and, but he was trying oh. to paint it as if I was trying to make the case that's that it never happens. And I'm like, that's that's extremely intellectually dishonest. And for you oh, to delete uh, the comment so people can't see that I'm that I have a very it's not even really a nuanced opinion. It's just it's just I was just making statements of fact, like you're straw manning him. <laughs> so I don't oh, know. Oh on Eastern Marxist, he he hasn't actually left um YouTube. Um he's pretty he's still pretty much active on Twitter. Okay. He's just going by a different name. Oh, okay. Is he still a Marxist? I know he changes positions like he changes underwear. Uh, no, like, uh, he's not a Marxist anymore. He's actually a, yeah, there he's go. actually deep. He actually became, he sort of have a Christian reconversion sort of a, a reconstructionist. No, like he's like, he's like a okay. Christian reborn. Um, and oh, he's getting really, he's getting, in, he's getting, um, he's getting into, um, more of the, 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 uh, theistic atheist debates now. He's going by society, societism. That is so bizarre. <laughs> it's funny because he used to be an ANCAP, an atheist ANCAP. Then he was a C4SS kind of guy. And then he got like really into kind of like left egoism. And then he became a Marxist. And <laughs> now he's not. That is weird. Uh, actually, I find it weird that many ex-Marxists have sort of like a Christian, um, a Christian reborn kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, so that was that was kind of like my initial beef, and some of his followers are just dense because I was criticizing Esoteric by saying that like you're deleting comments that are like critical of your opinion. That was my problem, and I and I also have a problem with YouTube deleting videos and closing accounts of people who are making ca the case for like conspiracy theories, and I'm I'm very much against like the, that kind of conspiracy mindset. Not to say that conspiracies never happen, they do, but I'm like I'm very much against that kind of ones that that esoteric was pushing. But he was complaining that people were censoring him, you know, on their platform, and I was like, but in your corner of your platform uh, of that of that platform where you control it, you're doing the exact same thing. That was my problem. I was not making the case that like you should never delete comments. <laughs> that was never my case, but apparently that's what a lot of people are interpreting it as because there was a guy that was arguing with uh, Exomniverse who used to be a YouTuber. But sadly, he, he got uh, privated all of his videos. He allowed me to download one of them and, and mirror one, and that's where that con co comic took place. And I was letting them kind of argue because it was like a, an alt-writer, like a very far alt-writer like ex explicitly racist one. And I was just letting it happen. Like, okay, let them debate. I have no problem with that. Um, and then one of the comments ended up getting thrown into my, into my, um, my filter. Cause I do have a filter for certain words. Mostly it has to do with like a certain person I know that was trying to dox another person. 
And so it was basically that person's name I had filtered so I could just be making sure that anytime that person was mentioned, that personal information wasn't getting thrown in there. I think that person has stopped trying to dox people. But anyways, um, and then the word nigger. <laughs> and I was like, I, I just want to make sure that no one's using that term un- uh, unironically. Um, and this person, like, you know, if, if someone would just wants to make like a racist comment, I'll just be like, yeah, let them have it or whatever. But this person was like, it was, it was, it was pretty crazy. Like, I think the, the I think the quote that I, I wonder if I could pull it up. <laughs> um, Oh geez. Yeah. The most clever nigger of all the niggers. And I was like that. Nope. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that on there. And they were like, ah, oh, you're leading comments that are, you know, that you don't like. I was like, Yes. Especially if, if a comment like that could end up getting my channel deleted and secondly, using it unironically like that, that's, that's a beyond the pale. And I ended up letting like one of them through. I was like, all right, I'm letting this one through, but I'm not going to let you do it anymore, <laughs> but I don't know. Anyways, that's like the only rule on my channel is like, once you start doing that or spamming, like, you know, like links to, you know, prescription pills or something like that, that's where I'm going to draw the line. Uh, but you know, if you want, if you want to say some racist ass shit, that's fine. Uh, but anything that's that blatant, I'm going to be like, nope, <laughs> reword it, <laughs> say the exact same thing. I don't care. Just that, that was a little bit beyond the pale that, that that's my trigger, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Esoteric entities fans. Um, not exactly the brightest peanuts in the turd. Let me just say that. Yeah. But the cult, but their cult leader is not really the brightest either. No, so. no, no, he's not. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <sighs> so um, probably should start wrapping this up. Do you have anything that you want to? Uh, you want to? What What is your YouTube channel like? What 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 can I say that would make it easier for people to type in if they don't want to click a link? I don't. Do you have a? Uh, is it use YouTube dot com user slash? Just type in Voltaire Bastiat. Okay. Voltaire Bastiat. And your Twitter is, it's got two underscores. I don't know if that's pretty visible from, from the, the title image that I'm putting on this thing, but, but what is that? <laughs> Let's see. Volt, Voltaire 1778 underscore. Underscore, underscore eight. There's two underscores. Yep. Okay. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, I hope that was a good guess. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I know you're not going to say this, but a hell thing. <laughs> Actually, yeah, uh, else, uh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs>